All right. We are on the very last section of chapter one. And I've got a twist for you here. This particular um, s s information from chapter one is actually found in chapter three. So that's not a typo. Um, this is in section 3.5, I think, of your textbook. So super weird, but we're going to cover this limit talk now. Um, and this is, in particular, we're going to talk a lot about horizontal asymptotes today, and we'll talk about why that ties into limits. So first thing here in example one we want to do is to draw a sketch of this function, um, f of x equals 1 over x. So we know that it goes through this guy. No, it doesn't. We know it goes through this guy here, and about here, and about here, so it does something like this, and then equal on the other sides, right? It does this and this. So it says, based on the picture, can you make a guess about what these limits are? Now, this is a new thing for us, right? This concept that the limit is going to be calculated where x approaches infinity. So we're going to talk about x approaching infinity, right? If we let these numbers, right, get really big, right, along the x-axis, we'd be approaching infinity way far to the right. So if we're going to think about what the y value is of this particular function at this far end of the graph over here, this limit trends towards 0. And then we are going to look at the limit as x approaches negative infinity, right? And that would be this end of the graph over here. And if we look at the y values at this function, if I was a better drawer, right, it should be getting closer and closer to 0 without ever touching it. So we're going to say that that limit is 0. And then if we read further, it says, good job. Consequently, these two limits have calculated the y value of the graph's horizontal asymptote. So that's not a coincidence that is exactly what we're doing when we find limits such as these and it says since they're the same value we can assume this function has one horizontal asymptote in example two we're going to look at this logistic function which means basically that there's an exponent in the denominator and we're going to sketch a graph of that and try to determine its limits right well i don't know what this graph looks like so i'm just going to plunk it into my calculator Let's make sure we put parentheses if you're doing the same around the denominator and get kind of a weird looking function. It looks like it does something, of course it goes through three here, like this, right? So we see some sort of asymptotes again. But what we tend to see right here, right, is we see one asymptote on this end of the graph, right, on the negative infinity end of the graph, and then we see a totally different asymptote, um, you know, down here at the right side of the graph towards positive infinity. And that is going to yield us two different answers for these limits, right? When it asks us for part A, the limit of this function as x approaches infinity is going to be zero, it looks like, from our picture, and then the limit for the other guy, right, as x approaches negative infinity, um, is going to be 4, okay? As it says here, it's rare but possible that a function has two different asymptotes. So sometimes you'll just be given these limits straight up of a function and asked to calculate a limit, and sometimes a problem might call for actually, you know, formally asking you to find the horizontal asymptote, okay? So we can do these things interchangeably because the limit is the asymptote and the asymptote gives the limit, right? So we'll talk more about, of course, you can probably make some good guesses here about how we get 0 and 4, um, but we're going to come back to this idea of this logistic function at the end here. So let's head on to um, page 2 here, where it says there are three standard cases involving rational functions. So first case, right, is the degree of the denominator is larger. So if we just look at a standard rational function, we have x cubed on the bottom versus x to basically the first power on top. And when we have um, values such as that, we have this ability because when we're talking about humongous numbers, right, if we think about the top being 2 times infinity and the bottom basically being infinity times infinity times infinity, which is humongous, and then minus 4, 
right, as it says here, that minus four is super irrelevant because if we're up towards infinity to the third power, right, minus four doesn't really change the value of it at all. So the idea here um, is that if we kind of cancel these things out, you can think, kind of think of it that way, we have one infinity canceling with the other infinity, and we basically have two divided by a um, hue, I don't know how to spell humongous, so maybe it's that, maybe it's humongous, I don't know, is this a O? These are great questions. Anyway, so two divided by a humongous number is zero. Okay, so anytime the degree of the denominator is larger than the numerator, we're going to put zero down. And you might recall some of this from last year in pre-calc, finding these asymptotes. Um, let's talk about when the degree in the numerator matches um, the degree in the denominator. So again, I'm talking about the largest cases. So here, we're going to focus on these two terms because the three isn't going to have much of an effect, the constant of three, when we talk about plugging infinity into these, right? So basically we have two times infinity times infinity divided by negative four times infinity times infinity. These guys cancel each other out. We reduce this and we get negative one half for our limit there. Okay. In the second case down here, you'll notice we're approaching negative infinity. You kind of have to zoom in there to see that negative infinity, right? And now I'm going to zoom, like, again, there's bunches of different powers and degrees going on here, but as far as infinities are concerned, the largest ones are the ones that control the outcome because infinity is such a large number. So again, you can kind of think of this without writing out the infinities to the fifth powers, right, that this is just going to be reduced to 9 tenths, because the infinities will cancel out because the degrees are the same. And voila, we have 9 tenths. And the last case down below here is when we have, um, let's go back to pink, um, the degree of the numerator being larger. So like in both of these cases, we have a power of 4 on top, and the largest degree on the bottom is the 3. So when that's the case, we're going to focus our attention again on the largest two terms, and then we're going to kind of reduce this. So x to the fourth over 4x cubed, right, simplifies, those two terms simplify to x over 4, right? And now I'm going to take the limit of that as x approaches infinity, because whatever else happens, right, we basically have infinity divided by 4, which is a humongous number, the larger the number gets on the top the larger the overall limit is going to be. And this infinity answer means that this function doesn't have an asymptote at all, right? This is the case where the graph will go without bound, either upwards or downwards, okay? So no horizontal asymptotes. Okay, the last one here, wee! Um, oh, this is supposed to say negative infinity here. We're supposed to be comparing these two questions. Um, so same idea, this reduces to x over 4 for the largest terms, and I want to take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x over 4, and that would be negative infinity divided by 4, right? And so my answer here would be negative infinity, okay? All right, so those are standard rational cases. I'm going to have you guys try example six and example seven. Um, you'll check those on Edpuzzle, and then you can bring those to class if you're not getting those correct. And I'm going to go fast forward here to these two special cases. Um, this is getting back to the logistics that we talked about at the beginning. And then also these weirdo functions, which are basically a rational function that has a radical in it. And it's very specific. It's usually like a radical of an x squared term. So for these two cases, again, I know that in the beginning, we just took this function, we plopped it in our calculator. Well, that's not going to be sufficient all the time because there's you know a portion of the exams that is no calculator, right? So if I'm asked to find the horizontal asymptotes, I know that I have to do two problems for the price of one. I have to make this calculation, and then I have to make this calculation because these functions here in this table are the type that are probably going to have two different horizontal asymptotes. So what we're doing here in our head is we're thinking about 1 divided by 3 plus 2 to a humongous number, however you spell humongous, right? So we basically have 1 over 3 plus 
infinity, right? Because 2 to the infinity is huge. And this is basically 1 over infinity. And if we take a small number like 1 and we divide it by a large number, right, we get 0. Okay? Now let's do the same thing down here and think about how this changes. If we kind of think about plugging in, quote unquote, infinity, I get this beeswax. And now what's awkward about this, right, is that 2 to the negative infinity, oh boy, is like this, right? So making that negative infinity a positive exponent, right, and sending it to its own little denominator means that this portion here, right, in the dotted, is going to what value if you divide 1 by a humongous number? Right? 0. So basically, I'm getting 1 over 3 plus 0. So my limit here is 1 third. And then if we think back about how this was worded at the beginning, find the equation of the horizontal asymptote, I need to make sure that I give both answers y equals 0 and what was that, shark? Oh my god, that was the weirdest thing. Get out of here. y equals 0 and y equals 1 third. So I have them in equation format, not just the value of the limit or the value of the asymptote. I actually put them in a horizontal equation. Okay. All right. Lastly, it's kind of the hardest kind because we got to do a lot of analysis here. Um, let's switch to, oh, let's go navy. All right. Um, we're going to find the equation of the horizontal asymptotes of this guy. So again, same as before, I do have to make two calculations on this one because it's this rational radical combo. So I'm going to do this guy, and then I'm also going to calculate this guy. And I'm going to focus, like I did before, on the largest terms in the top and the largest term in the bottom. Now, there's only one term in the bottom, so this isn't really exciting. But basically, this boils down to the square root of 4x squared, right, all over x. Okay, now we got to think about, the square root of 4 is pretty easy, right? If I think about my numerator here, that's 2, right? But I bet a lot of you don't know what the square root of x squared is, okay? I'm going to pause the video, have you pause the video here, and I want you to graph in your calculator y equals square root of x squared, and tell me what you get for that graph. Now, if you took the time to do that, right, you should have noticed that this is 2 times, this is the absolute value of x, isn't it? It's not just x, okay? That's the definition of the square root of x squared. So we get 2 times the absolute value of x, and then we have to think about plugging infinity into that expression. So 2 times the absolute value of infinity divided by infinity makes for two times, that doesn't really change the sign at all, of infinity. And then infinity on the bottom cancels, and I get a value of two for this limit. Now, watch how exciting this is when we go with a negative infinity. I'm going to do the same process. I am going to whittle this down to this idea of two absolute value of x over x, right, which was kind of like... Same thing I did up top. And now I'm going to plug um, negative infinity in here. So this is 2 times the absolute, oh, heck no, absolute value of negative infinity, right, divided by negative infinity. And the way this shakes out, since I'm absolute valuing in the numerator, the absolute value of negative infinity switches to positive infinity, right? And when I divide that out, I basically have 2 divided by negative 1. So my limit at the other end of this graph is going to be negative 2. And like the previous special case, right, I'm going to have y equals 2 as one asymptote and y equals negative 2 as the other asymptote. Okay, now going back to up here, when you have just normal rational functions, like all of these were normal, they weren't logistic, no exponents of x, there's no radicals here, you don't have to do two different infinity to the positive and negative end like we did for these down here. These are very special cases, so they have their own way of finding the horizontal asymptotes because there's two of them. The end.